Welcome back everyone to Blackthorn Prod. My name is Noah and today we will take a look at our cursor. In other words, this little white arrow that we can move using our mouse. The cursor in many games is crucial. It can be a means of directing characters on a map, placing and building stuff in a strategy game, a way to control where your character is looking in an FPS, or simply something to help you interact with menus and buttons. Basically, players will, in many games, be spending hours and hours staring at this jittery arrow, which I believe is reason enough to pay a decent amount of attention to it. Leaving your game with a cursor that looks like this is quite boring and is a missed opportunity to add an extra layer of polish and depth to your creation. And so with that said, I'll be showing you how to customize and juice up your mouse cursor with animations, particle effects and sprites. So the first and quickest way you can go about customizing your mouse cursor is in your player build settings. Simply head over to file, build settings and then click on player settings. Whatever platform you're developing for, you will have the chance to drag and drop a custom cursor right in here. So let's create a basic cursor right away. I'll head over to Photoshop, choose File New, and I must now carefully pick my file dimensions. I recommend you take anything between 32 times 32 pixels to 512 times 512. I'll choose the latter. I can now draw an orange cartoony cursor with a thick black outline and export it as a PNG into my Unity project. The last crucial step here is changing its texture type to cursor. Now we can confidently choose this has our new cursor. And hitting play, you will see that I now have this orange cartoon cursor instead of the default boring one. Awesome. However, it still looks a little dull. On top of that, animating our cursor and resizing it using this method is far from straightforward. So let me now introduce to you the second technique one could use to customize and bring to life his game's cursor. Use 2D sprites. In other words, get a 2D sprite to follow our mouse cursor and then hide our mouse cursor via script. For now, I'll just use this basic orange cursor I created a few moments ago and I'll make sure to set texture type back to sprite 2D and UI. I'll now create a new c -sharp script called Mouse Cursor and drag and drop it onto my orange cursor sprite. In my update function, I'll start by making a vector2 variable called cursor pose and set it equal to camera.main.screen to world point. And in the parentheses, type input.mouse position. Now, despite the scary looking syntax, this vector2 variable simply stores the cursor's position. And all I must now do is set my sprite position equal to cursor pose. I'll also type in my start function cursor.visible equals false. So our ugly little arrow does not display itself in game. I can now hit play and happily notice that things are working wonderfully. And with this method, I can very easily resize my mouse cursor by simply scaling up the sprite. And of course, nothing is stopping me from tweaking its rotation. We can also head over to the animation window and with our cursor selected, hit create new animation. I'll call this animation cursor idle. Now I recommend you don't tweak the cursor's position since that could end up feeling counterintuitive to the player. What you could simply do is hit the record button and scale up your cursor a little at around 30 milliseconds. Remembering to copy and paste the first keys at the end of the animation so it loops. Now when I hit play, 
I have an animated cursor. With this sprite method, I can also easily change the appearance of my cursor in game. For example, I might want my cursor to take on the shape of a hand when I hold down the left mouse button. So I could create a new layer in Photoshop, draw a quick hands cursor and export it into Unity. In my mouse cursor script, I'll create a private variable of type sprite renderer called rend and a public sprite variable named hand cursor. In my start function, I will set rend equal to the component on my game object of type sprite renderer. All I must now do is create an if statement, checking whether or not I have my left mouse button held down, and if I do, set my sprite renderer sprite equal to the hand cursor sprite. However, I also want my cursor to turn back into its normal self once I release the left mouse button, and doing this is also a piece of cake. I'll just create another public sprite variable called normal cursor and then I'll make an if statement checking whether I've released the left mouse button. If so, I'll just set my sprite renderer sprite equal to the normal cursor. I'll then drag and drop my sprites into those empty slots in the inspector and hit play. And if all was done correctly, things should work smoothly. To make your cursor and clicks really juicy, it's also great to add a little click sound whenever you, well, click, as well as a little particle effect. So I can quickly create one using the Unity's particle system, and once I'm satisfied with its look, I'll turn it into a prefab, and then back in my script, I'll make a public game object variable called click effect, and instantiate it whenever I hit the left mouse button. Again, I'll drag and drop that prefab in my empty slot in the inspector. Hit play and make sure everything is working. With those little tricks, you don't need to be a great artist to give your game a cool mouse cursor that feels intuitive and responsive. Of course, nothing is stopping you from taking some time designing a cool mouse cursor that fit well in your game world. You could also add a cursor customization menu. Alright, before wrapping up the video, I also wanted to show you Ori and the Blind Forest's epic mouse cursor. It has this wonderful little effect that trails behind it which really adds some magic. So what you could do to achieve this effect is create some sprite or particle effect and spawn it every 0.25 seconds at the cursor's position. So I'll make a public float variable called time between spawn and set that equal to 0.1f. And then make an if statement checking whether that time between spawn variable is less or equal to zero. If it is, then I'll want to spawn my effect. If not, I'll slowly decrease its value using time.delta time. I'll now make a public game object variable called trail effect and then simply instantiate that at my cursor's current position and with no rotation. I'll also reset time between spawn back to 0.1. Populating your scene with effects is however very performance heavy, so I propose you create a little script called destroyer and add it to both of your effects and inside it simply destroy the effect after a certain amount of seconds. For example, 2. I can now drag and drop my trail effect inside this empty slot. Hit play and enjoy twirling my cursor around the scene. And that will mark the end of the video. As always, I hope you enjoyed the content and learned or gained insight on something new. You can always hit the like and subscribe buttons if you feel like supporting me and my channel. It would be so appreciated. Also consider following me on Twitter where I regularly post character designs and notify you of new videos recently released. Okay, stay tuned for a lot more game creation goodness. Thanks for watching. Cheers.